she's a popular girl right now. A lot of grunting and runting. No idea that you were also coming. What? Um, what? Huh? You still have a little boyfriend? Yeah, you do. What are you doing hanging out with the boys? You just get yourself right in there. Who is it today? Who's the lucky lady? So a bunch of people are asking us what we're doing with this cabin. Wow. How many hours was that? That's not talk about. <laughs> morning guys I'm actually don't get used to this I'm just going off the farm for a few hours this morning uh, a good friend that I have met virtually and in real life now uh, has asked me to be a part of her brand new podcast uh, I think I'm one of the first few anyway uh, she hasn't launched it yet so she's doing a bunch of pre uh, recording and then I'm not sure when she's launching it but I'll let you guys know anyway so I have about a two-hour drive to her farm uh, so I will uh, introduce you to Laurel. She's got Highland cattle, which are beautiful. She's got some, she got a donkey from Belinda's mom, I believe. She's got some chickens. I think she's got some ducks. She used to have geese. I think she got rid of them. Um, however, I just ran into Carissa and she said we have some action in the barn. So I want to, I just want to pop my head in first and just see how we're faring in the love matchmaking department. Good morning. Hi. I'm my best friend. <laughs> I know. William? Let's say you. Looks like your boy's doing all right. <laughs> you found a queen. If you missed the last video, uh, yesterday we did take out cedars on these ewes and ewe lambs and we added the boys and there was no, basically no action. A little bit in the red pen. Oh, good boy. Excellent. I can't show any of it, but she looks satisfied. <laughs> or disgusted, I'm not really sure. But you can tell, so I paint their back ends and you can tell she's been smeared. She's a popular girl right now. Red, what are you doing? Uh-oh. I give her another 12 hours or so. Hello, Willow. Oh my gosh, Willow is standing beside two boys fighting each other. And she's just sniffing them. She's like putting herself out there. My goodness. What are you saying, popular girl? What do you got chasing you? A lot of grunting and runting. Nice shirt. Oh, this one did? <laughs> oh my god, I had no idea you were coming. <laughs> what a shot. I had no idea. What a shot. I had no idea that you were also <laughs> coming. What? Uh, what? <laughs> huh? What are, what are the chances? You're repping. You're repping all the things. Oh my god, what a brutal day. Oh, I know. Outside. How was the drive? Oh my god, the store is just oh, yeah. I, I, iconic. Iconic, thank you. Iconic. Um, yeah, whatever you want to do. Sweet. Look I'm at just... this. I might steal your table. Like, I want to take it home. Oh, it's really heavy, so you can try, but... Um, this is actually kind of a beast. A desk I had in my, um, room, my bedroom. It was, like, my office three years ago. I love her. And it's just been, like, clothing oh. pile. So I was like, hey, I need something you, for the... You found her true beauty. I did! Love I it. truly did. Um, I have a couple tricks up my sleeve. First of all, the coffee. Coffee first. So yeah, I am here at uh, Laurel's store that she basically built herself. It's an old garage. She just fixed up last winter, did a shiplap wall, 
and she works with all local vendors across Canada, local and across Canada with like really cool, like, what are these? Deodorants? Dirty Hipster? Just a really cool store. So I did a lot of Christmas shopping here uh, before Christmas when I was lambing, but worth it. <laughs> We're gonna have fun, I think. And she got me a Starbucks, so excuse me. What's up, lady? Hi. How are you? I'm good. So Barn ceiling? <laughs> Birdie, what did you do? She's what did you do? Did you eat your collar? You... She loves mommy. Give me your baby. Oh, sweet baby. Oh, I love oh. you. Bless you. You're... She's like, who is this person with the camera? <laughs> she's like, why isn't she petting me? Yeah. Oh, oh she's so sweet. Oh, there we go. I'm gonna there stay. She oh, okay, is. I'm gonna stay over here. <laughs> You're getting your collar tomorrow. No jumping, bad girl. I mean, oh, look at me. Yeah, look. Oh. <laughs> Hi, baby. I'm hugging you, mom. You can that was sweet. You keep your butt on the ground. Give me your butt on the ground. I know. You're I know. so protective. Hello, Angus. Birdie. How you doing? How you doing? I am friends with Belinda. Oh my God, stop. Oh, oh my god. She's gonna take me <laughs> I never really signed off with you guys last night. I had a great day yesterday with Laurel. Uh, a great day off the farm, actually, but it was just nice. I love visiting other people's farms. And especially people like Laurel, because I follow her pretty religiously on Instagram. It's nice being able to finally really sit and chat with someone who kind of does this side like you. So she shares her farm story and her farm business and just her life really on social media. So it was really cool to, to meet her. The podcast I think took till about two in the afternoon and then we went for a quick bite and then I had to run to Home Depot. I had to get a ceiling fan for our cabin and uh, I got Chris a new shovel because she wears out all the scrapers because she keeps this floor well immaculate. So anyway that's all you missed yesterday. Little Willow you were having a little day yesterday weren't you? You still have a little boyfriend? Yeah you do. He's been just glued to you for 24 hours, literally. Hey, Dorset, am I gonna have some little Dorset Willow babies? Oh, you're lovely. Yes, they've been uh, best friends here for a bit. There's a lot of smeared paint for this being like day two, I guess, technically. Yeah, she's been smeared. Maybe, oh yeah, she's been smeared. We didn't actually put on, we didn't really paint them real heavy this time. So these guys have been, yeah, they've been working. See red's still going hard over there. I actually got a random call from my nephew. He just got a new job and he's working for some people, I guess, who have sheep and they're away. So he, he is being introduced to his first prolapse. So I wanted to find my kit with everything in it and knock on wood, it's been so long that I actually have to look for the stuff. So I told him I have videos, but I just wanted to show him like all the tools that he would need if it doesn't go, if it doesn't pop back in. Um, it's small enough right now that it should pop back in, but I'm like, if it doesn't, I have tools and I can show you how to use it. But I don't know where all my stuff is. 
It's been a hot minute since I've had a prolapse. Nope, that's not the right one. All right, I found the stuff to just show them. Here's the harness, and then I use a spoon to keep it in. So I am just going to take some pictures for him so he knows the tools that may be required. Poor guy. I mean, welcome to sheep farming. My uh, nephew just texted me back. He said thank you. So I'm assuming he got it back in and that hopefully it won't be a problem for the poor kid. I've been actually taking quite a few videos for Instagram because uh, YouTube has made it pretty, actually they've come out and said like no filming of anything that would show uh, just the action of mating is not uh, suitable for ads on videos. It's not even really about the revenue. They don't push the video, so it just, it just doesn't get viewed. And when I put all the time and effort into filming and editing and uploading, and then they, they like kill the video, it's like, it is, honestly, it's the days that I want to quit, actually. It's, it's, not even, it's not even the negative comments or anything like that. It's, it's YouTube, it's the platform itself that sometimes makes me want to quit. So I apologize for not showing stuff, but if you do want to see more stuff, follow me on Instagram. We have fun over there. I laugh so hard <laughs> during breeding season just because they're, they're just funny and I find it very interesting, just animal behavior when it comes to lambing and when it comes to mating season. It's just, it's so instinctual to them. This will be busy in here for probably about three days and then we won't see anything. And, and lambing is very much the same. You'll have like three, three, four, five really busy days. And then you kind of get a reprieve and then they start up again. So um, it very much mimics what you see at mating season. Billy has been chasing some women today. He has just been a little stud muffin. Who is it today? Who's the lucky lady? Hello. Is that the pine? It's pine from the 50. Oh. This is our wood. Yep. What do you make me? Table. Yay. Morning guys, it is Saturday and I just did a little scan across the flock and they're all laying down. <laughs> so needless to say, I think uh, I think they're fed and happy and just not interested in doing the things that they're supposed to be doing right now. Um, or they could already be done, but I don't think they are. They're just maybe having a bit of a break. I got a message this morning and I've been getting comments and I thought, you know what, I'll take a couple minutes this morning and talk about what breeds I'm running right now because I did a video ages ago, probably like three years ago or more now, based on like what breed of sheep do I have in this barn. I think over the years I've been playing around with different breeds just to see what matches my system uh, best. So I don't like giving people breed ideas just because I really do think based on animal behavior, how you're feeding them, how often you're breeding them, you know, how many lambs you actually want, at lambing time like are you set up to have multiples all those all those things have to kind of come into your decision making process so I hate giving out like this is the this is the breed that I run because a half the time I don't know what breeds I'm running because it's very much a hybrid of a whole bunch of breeds but I will give you kind of I think what the majority of my flock is currently 2016 for sure was the first year I started keeping my own f1 
uh, U's back. The, the problem was my U's were kind of all over the place. Um, but I did bring in some some of these composite U's. Uh, I brought them in in like 2015, I think. So like they've, their first lambs came out in 2016. Those first uh, F1 crosses were like, I kept, I keep calling them like a steel composite cross because that was the people that, the people that came up with this cross, their last name was Steel. So I've just like nicknamed this breed Steel. Uh, it is a composite flock based on a Dorset Rito base. They've added a couple other uh, breeds out of New Zealand to make them very multi-purposed. So they can be, they can do very well in pasture, they can do very well in this system. So that's kind of why, why I went with them. They were also big mentors in my life here on the farm when I was first getting, really getting going and building some momentum and some confidence in the sheep farming world. They were a big reason why I'm still doing it today. My main U flock that I took my first F1s from was this steel composite. So that's out there. My Rams in 2017, I think it's maybe 2017, I had some Texel, I had Dorset, I had Ile de France, I had, like, had a little bit of everything. I would say majority was maybe leaning more Ile de France. I had to repopulate my Rams in 20, in 2017, so I had to get rid of them all and start new. Uh, majority I brought in were Rito because I wanted my ewe lambs to be Rito sired. Most of the offspring, main offspring, first offspring, were steel Rito cross. Since then I brought in some others, other breeds just to play with to see if I like them. Ile de France Suffolk were kind of the only two besides the Rito that I really brought in that year and I really like them. I ended up kind of growing out of the Ile de France and the Suffolk as well and part of it's the rams got so big I couldn't I couldn't move them through my handling system. They would not go. They would just put on the brakes. Uh, they were just too big for me to handle and they knew it. So currently um, I've brought in a few like random breeds just to see again how I like them. I did bring in some Dorset. I still have Rito. I've brought in some new Ritos over the years but right now I really just have two suppliers of my Ritos and then um, I have Tunis but they are like a Tunis cross and I just brought them in for a little fun and a little color. So I still have Lucky the Suffolk. I think that's what we have now. It makes breeding a little bit easier just because I've split them into those three breeding groups. So I just make sure, you know, if they're bred group one, if they're sired by group one and I keep them as a replacement, I now have the opportunity to breed them group two or group three. And if they're bred group two, then I can breed them group one or group three. So I just go by groups now. I know which rams are allocated for those groups. Um, most of it, most of the time, it's just based on, on breeds. I hope that helps. Um, that's kind of just what works with my system. I'm still learning lambing and mothering ability. How many lambs she's carrying right now means the most to me because that's, that's really the foundation and the starting block of everything that happens after that. So, um, that's really what I've been focusing on traits and then, you know, going forward, if, if that becomes kind of stabilized or solidified, then I can start working on, you know, how do I improve maybe on the market side. That was a very long version of what you guys were probably asking, but there you go. Basically all the girls are down here and all the boys are down there. What are you doing hanging out with the boys? You just get yourself right in there. You have been busy for two full days, lady. You a heartbreaker? And back to the feet. Well, I was going to put them in place, but it's very difficult to do it, so... Gotcha. Oh, yeah.
trying to put together a ceiling fan. Uh, we don't love ceiling fans, but we wanted a little more air circulation here in the cabin, especially with the wood stove blaring, because uh, we do have a little lofty area right above me here. So I am putting together my last fan blade. It's been fun. So Mark ran back to the shop to build a kind of a box because we're putting it right at a peak. So we need like a, like a base. So a bunch of people are asking us what we're doing with this cabin. No, we are not building it to be an Airbnb. We are building it because we have don't we don't have a lot of time, especially in the summer, to travel anywhere. Uh, Mark's mom has a, a cottage not even 45, 50 minutes from here, and we got there maybe twice for one night this past summer. So it gives us an ability to uh, leave home, but we're only like. A minute away if we had to get back so it's far enough away it's quiet back here uh, when all the leaves are out like in the summer it's magical back here and even in the winter it's magical like when it's really snowy and calm it's really really quite pretty uh, in the future we're gonna put some walking trails in throughout the bush because I love to go hiking so that's kind of my dream is to be able to like stay here uh, on the weekends maybe if we can and get up have coffee we're making like a little kitchenette like a just a little galley like a cupboard area have a coffee and like go on the trails in the morning that's kind of what i that's what i envision for this little cabin it's just a little retreat that we're making um for ourselves anyway so that's uh kind of the vision behind this cabin mark's always wanted to build something like this he he really loves the timber frame um, design of buildings and he's been honestly he's just been YouTubing this stuff for probably the last two or three years anyway um, and he started last winter late fall last winter he started creating the shell like the the frame the actual timber frame those are the big thick boards here and eventually when when we're done I'll do the full I took pictures here and there we didn't take a lot of footage just because it was kind of our little just our kind of time away from the camera type deal and then the more I was back here I'm like we got to document this even if it's just for us but the more I take you guys inside the more people are like where did this come from what's the story behind this so that's kind of the story behind it uh I'm done I'm done with blades I gotta wait for the boss man to get back there should be two screws down there black by the on top of the Class through the styrofoam. Longest fan install in the world. We didn't have to pay by the hour. Uh, I hate nine volt batteries. It's, like I don't like, know what the purpose of them. They are. don't even fit into anything. Talk about it. Hey guys, it is Sunday. I like to say Sunday morning, but it's the afternoon. We did another quick run to Home Depot. That ceiling fan took us all afternoon yesterday to install. Um, the slope really got us, so it took us about three attempts to get that kind of fixed up. But Mark came back here this morning to light the fire, get it warmed up. I think we're going to try and get a couple trim pieces put on, and then we can tear down the scaffolding, which has been in our way. Maybe 
Oh, this might be all right. Mm -hmm. This looks like it might be all right. Oh, I don't think you meant to do that, but oh my god, the wood matches perfect to the to the uh, beam. Yeah. Yeah. Like almost exact. You almost the beam is right perfectly in the middle of the window. Yeah. So I don't know if you just want to attach it to the beam. I think I will actually. Was looking at that. Because it kind of looks better. I cannot believe that matches. So you might as well take these right in. These ones can just kind of get tucked into the corner here. Hopefully there's room for all of them. Could you gym when you were growing up in elementary school had like the, yeah. the, the fine in. set that you like hug the wall? Yep. Do they do those anymore? I used to love those. They, you only got them like once a year. They would yeah, take them for a course. Yeah, because you had to set up the whole gym. Oh, I loved it. It was, it was like, it was so fun. I'm at that stage now. I'm like, how are we at this point? We, we were setting beams last year this time. Yep, January, I think. You wanted it to stay in there? Yeah. Oh, I thought you were wiring it together. Well, I can. I guess I can put it through. Let me do. Just enough, eh? Yeah, I kind of rounded that. Edges too, which is nice. I think. I think it's nice. Can we take these off? Yep. I like. I can't believe how much that wood matches. Yeah, it just it's a different way to do it, but it doesn't really. No, it looks really. It looks like it's part of the fixture. That block of ash is a little lighter than the other stuff. But. These ones are more warm again. Yeah. yeah, too warm. So you want to replace it with those other ones? Those are pretty big though. We can try them. Off the right in here, eh, Moose? 